Hi everyone, I'm Janelle with Tunes Unlimited and this is the final video for this playlist series. In this video, we're going to import the G2 face into Crazy Talk Animator and test it out and see how everything came out. So stay tuned because this video is coming up next. TunesUnlimited.com Okay, so we're in Adobe Animate and I'm gonna go ahead and export this character out onto my desktop. We're gonna call it Male G2 Face. And now I'm going to bring up Crazy Talk Animator 3. Let's go ahead and expand this. And I'm going to bring up the dummy template and we're gonna bring him into composer mode. All right, so let's go ahead and load our G2 character. So because we're only focusing on the face and we're not worried about the body, this is going to allow you to pop this face onto any character that you like. So I'm not going to focus on doing any joint masking or anything. I'm just going to focus on the actual face to make sure everything imported correctly and it's behaving the correct way. So here we are. Let me zoom in really good for his face. And I am going to first just do a quick turnaround just to see how is rotating and now I'm going to do some face tests up, down, left, right, and some natural movement, eyes closing and blinking. So I'm going to stop this because one thing I noticed that I don't like is his default facial expression. His um, mouth is too low. So I'm going to bounce back to Adobe Animate. Let me minimize that. And I want to go in and look at his mouth expressions again. So we have certain expressions like this where his mouth is too high. Everything should fall back around the same line. So we even have a choice of bringing some of them up or bringing some down. I'm going to bring up the guides and that is a lot of guides. Let me clear these guides real quick. Okay, so here's our default facial expression. And when I scan through, as you can see, some of the other smiles are much higher up than where the default one is at. So when it talks, it doesn't look as smooth. Now. As I explained in the previous video, when a character is talking, your upper mouth does not move much. Most of the exaggeration that's going on with the character's mouth expressions is done with your bottom, um, your jaw. So the, the bottom lip is moving and expanding, but your upper lip does not move that much. And even though these are cartoony characters, you still want it to follow the basic principle for the most part. Now, since these are the talking expressions and all of these seem to be pretty much in the same space, I'm going to draw my line to match up with my talking expressions. And then I'm going to go back. So this is great. That's a good baseline for most of your mouth expressions to be at. So we're gonna go back to the front of the frames and we're gonna move up expressions that are too far down so that it makes sense when he's lip syncing. Now, before I make changes to the other angles, I'm going to test and see how this particular one came out to see if his animation is more smooth. And now let's see how he talks. Up, down, left, right, and some natural movement. Eyes closing and blinking. So that's much better. Every As you can see now, the lips are not jumping from extreme, you know, up and down extremely. It's kind of smooth and it makes sense when he talks. So those are some of the things. This is the fine tuning of your character. Sometimes it may look right when you're building it, but when you're testing it out, 
you can see where there are some changes that needs to be done. Now there's another change that's not here. So we didn't really do an eyeball. They're just pupils. And so I am debating whether or not to have his pupils move around. Now I'm going to zoom in and yes, he does look very weird. And the reason why he looks weird is because the joint mass is not applied. But I am going to try to see past this. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to bring his face all the way to the front so he looks a little normal. And what I want to do is bring up this G3 character. He has a similar face structure with his eyes just being pupils. And as you can see, when I when I go into the facial puppeteering, I can make his eyes move. So it can move left and right. And I think that it's justified that you could possibly move the character's eyes around, even though it's just a pupil. So we're going to go back to Adobe Animate and we're going to make the changes to make his eyes move. Okay, so under normal circumstances, in order for an eyeball to move, you usually have to have three layers, a mask layer, a pupil layer, and an image layer. But we're going to do a little trick that will allow just the pupil to move around. So I'm going to, I'm in the eye expressions for the left eye and I'm going to go in and I'm just going to rename this pupil. And I'm also going to go into puppet producer and I'm going to tag this as the pupil layer. And that's it. Now, if I was trying to make a regular eye, this would not operate the way I wanted to. But since in this case, my character only has a pupil, the pupil will move around in the space just like a regular eye will. So it's going to behave just the way I want it to behave. So what I'm going to do is, is pause this video. I am going to make all the different changes to both the eye expression and the mouth expression for all the angles. So for the eyes, I'm going to tag them as pupils. And for the mouth, I'm going to use that same um, default upper lip line that I drew my guide with and I am going to move all of the mouth expressions so that they line up with the upper lip at that guide and then we're going to come back and see how everything looks in Crazy Talk Animator. Okay so we're back in Crazy Talk Animator and I am going to update the final changes with all the eye modifications done and all the mouth modifications done and we can see how our G2 face came out. Take him to the stage mode. And the first thing I want to check out is just how the eyes move. So let me see. So his eyes now move up and down and around. And it should do it for any eye expression. So if he was looking over there, when I change his eye expression, his blink should still reflect the move. And you can see they're not centered like the eyebrows. So everything is moving exactly how I want this character to animate. And I want to see how it looks from different angles. So I'm going to rotate him and just make sure his eyes is moving from that expression as well. And as I can see, it is definitely moving around. Everything looks great. And I'm going to try this side angle because that's the last angle for all of the facial expressions. But yep, his eyes will move around as well there. So I am happy with the eye expression. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to test the lip, the lip sync and all of the angles as well. Since the other angles are identical, which is the 45 and um, the 90 degree angle, they're identical to the 315 and the 270. I'm not going to test that. I already know how it's going to behave. But I want to see how everything looks now. So I am really happy the way his mouth expressions move. It seems to flow much better. So I think that change 
definitely resolved a lot of issues. I just want to see how he talks from up, different angles. Down, left, right, and some natural movement. Eyes closing and blinking. And let me try him from the side angle. Up, down, left, right, and some natural movement. Eyes closing and blinking. So what I would like to do is bring his mouth, his entire mouth expressions in just a little bit and test it one more time. Actually, that might be a little too far. Let me bring it back in to maybe 6.3. Now, although I like the way this look, it's a few of them, there's few individual ones that are not aligned correctly. So I want to kind of go through and find those individual ones and move them over so that it makes sense. So now that we have everything kind of aligned the way we want, let me remove this animation and bring him back to the front. And I want to take um, test him with some of the standard motions, facial motions for Crazy Talk Animator. See how he looks. Ah, professional getting to work this way. Ah, good job, good job. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yes. Oh, sure. Of course I can make it there by five. Absolutely. I'll even be there early. Certainly. Goodbye. So let's do one more thing. I'm going to go to the composer mode. And I am going to save this head. This will now be a entire head. Let me go ahead and save him. The only thing left to do for this character is to do um, the render style. And the render style is pretty easy. In fact, we can do this real quick. Let's go into it. And we're going to tag all of the skin, skin one. And next we'll go to the hair. He only has one color hair, so we will call that, we will call it hair one. And since he has front and back hair, we want to make sure we get the back hair as well. Uh, let's go to the ears. And I'm just going to skim through the rest of this. For the brow, you have the choice of tagging it as hair or the brow. Um, if you tag it brow, you can change it a different color from the hair. If you tag it as the hair, it will change with the hair color, so they will always be synced up. It's your preference. The other modification I make is for the mouth, I usually tag the teeth, the tongue, and if there is any um skin skin associated with it say for example the the kissy lips um if i'm using a darker skin tone then i'm using skin two and if i'm using the regular skin tone is skin one and that's all of the items that i would need to tag and we're just going to check the render style out i'm going to go into it and see if it changes everything for me And it's always good to check them in the other angles because sometimes if you miss one, it will very easily show up. All 
All right, so I think we have everything tagged. Let me go back to the default. And we're going to save this one more time with the render style applied. Okay, so one more thing we're going to do is I'm going to bring out the dummy character one more time because we just want to see how our character looks with a with clothes on with a different body. So I'm going to go ahead and bring out actually let's just make him a doctor. I'm going to bring out this doctor um character and instead of using Walter as the face, I'm going to use my character. So let me hide the bones. Go under head and pop in my character and see how he looks. And everything popped in instant and smooth. And I'm going to do a quick rotation. Let's zoom in just a little bit. And there you have it. Real easy to drop and drag and make this a totally different character. We'll bring out a few more characters with his. So everything looks nice. This character looks nice. It's great. Ready to be uploaded to the website. One thing you can do, one more thing you can do is convert this face to a G2 face. Now, in order for my face to be compatible with both Crazy Talk Animator 2 and 3, you will have to convert this into a G2 Plus character individually. And, um, and the reason why is because once I convert it into a, a G2 Plus, it's no longer compatible with Crazy Talk Animator 2. And everyone doesn't have the new version of CTA yet. So I'm going to show you how to do it. You can just go up to edit and right here is just one button. Click this and make it a G2 character and you're done. So I hope you have enjoyed this playlist series. This is a more simplified version of a G2 character. But as you can see, you can have tons of fun and do very good animation using basic shapes. This whole character was um, a lot of basic shapes. This playlist series was very fun to create. Uh, one major note is now that you have a nice G2 face created, make sure you recycle your content as much as possible. Um, make copies of your eye your mouth expressions, your eyebrow expressions, because these are things that you can put in other characters and save a significant amount of time. Even the ears, hair, hair design, just by popping in copies of this character. So just make sure moving forward, as you build and expand your library, you keep those things into consideration. Hey, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you would like to purchase any of my products, head over to my store where I sell characters, props, and scenes. Stay tuned for the next video and take care.